After the American Civil War, there was a brief period called Reconstruction, in which there were electorally successful interracial coalitions to push for a more progressive politics. Over 2,000 African-American men were elected to positions of power within government, and progressive reforms were made. By the end of that century, this had all been reversed and Jim Crow had been instantiated, institutionalized. How did that happen? Well, I have just read a fantastic book called Stony the Road by Henry Louis Gates Jr. And he points to three important conditions, two I think which you already know, uh, electoral fraud by Democrats and also massive intimidation and violence by the Ku Klux Klan, for example. So between the between 1868 and 1871, over 400 black men were lynched across the South. So this is a campaign of terror and fear to keep black people in their place. But on top of that, he points to the cultural construction of racism and how people might feel either morally righteous in their racism and also come to be afraid of black people. So there's so so he points to Three really important movements. One is uh, eugenics, the growing idea that we need selective breeding for the best stock and should weed out anyone who would um, damage future generations. Two, the idea that certain races were superior to others, and that was justified by the pseudoscience of craniology. So that is weighing brains and measuring skulls for example, to say that one race is superior to others. So if you have those two beliefs, which were also which were propagated in science, propagated by Harvard University, propagated in churches, the idea that one race is superior to another, propagated in literature, in cartoons, cartoons were all breeding this idea of inferiority, or inferiority the stupid Sambo character, this infantile character, not ready for self-governance, ill-equipped, ill-equipped for self-governance, unable to be taught. And therefore needs to be chaperoned. All these, all these ideas propagated through literature, through Democrat propaganda, through political parties. What that led to then is a fear of interracial sex and interracial marriage. And that fear of interracial marriage actually stained the entire 20th century. Yeah, under, and we can see this this fear of interracial marriage is not wanting the superior white stock to, to be polluted, to be polluted uh, and deteriorated. And so even, and even within populist campaigns, even where white men were perfectly happy to stand with black people to push for equality for political rights and civic rights, they did not want those same black men to be their brothers-in-law. They actively resisted proposals for interracial marriage and I, I see this building on this wonderful book I see this as functioning in two ways one it's a motivated belief it makes this this pseudoscience and makes people feel more comfortable in their pre-existing racism and I think uh, the Baptist faith, white evangelical faith functioned in the same way. It's a motivated faith to make people feel more comfortable. And a second effect is it creates a sort of a canopy through groupthink. If all the Christian radio, Christian magazines, white supremacist um, newspapers are propagating that idea, then people do not hear or listen to an alternative. And that's magnified by the suppression of black education. So if you have very, very few black people speaking out, then the um, hegemonic narrative does not get punctured, right? As long as all the people, the vast majority of intellectuals in Harvard are white men, they propagate their own ideas and don't get challenged. But moreover, it's because it's a motivated belief, people are content with it because it makes them feel good about being racist. And so they do not rigorously challenge that pseudoscience junk. Instead, that they ha they cling to it because it makes them feel happy, and it's this and it's uh, this idea that runs through the twentieth century. So, if you look at the nineteen fifties campaigns around massive resistance, resisting the civil rights struggle, they're all about they're all motivated by this fear of sex, this fear of interracial sex, and and I didn't realize until I'd read this wonderful book that it's all about this idea of fear of interracial breeding, and for that reason. The races needed to be segregated. And so that's why after the Brown v. Brown v. Board of Education, whites increasingly fled to private schools. And that's why 
uh, black women were increasingly, many black women, over 7,000 black women in North Carolina were sterilized. And it's this, it's this eugenicist fear. Now one, I would make, it's a brilliant book. It's a fantastic book. And it's an eye-opening book about the importance of culture. I would add one thing that surprised me is that it didn't really touch on how religion has, how especially white evangelical faith has propagated that idea. And I think that, and I think religion is particularly important to the durability of these because in the Northeast, many of the, many of those eugenicist ideas of craniology are now debunked and dismissed, but it's where religiosity is, it's under the religious, it's under the Southern Baptist white evangelical faith where those racist ideas persist. So I see more cultural persistence where, where they were propagated by churches. That would be my only caveat. I mean, otherwise brilliant book, all about the importance of eugenics, craniology, the idea of racial supremacy propagated um, through literature, cartoons and politics that ultimately led to a, a weakening of interracial coalitions um, for a more progressive politics and led people to fear black men because it was building on those campaigns, those fears of interracial sex, that black men were then put, uh, portrayed as sex pests, as sexual predators, and white women were made, the white women were made to feel afraid. Um, and there was massive rape hysteria and paranoia. And it's that paranoia which absolutely motivated many of the mothers who joined uh, the massive resistance in the 1950s. So it's a phenomenally brilliant book and I strongly recommend it. Thank you.